Hey there. Uh, today's video uh, is kind of a another one of the windy day series. It's been blowing 25 to 30 knots for the last uh, week now, so I haven't even been able the chance to get on the water. Um, I have been catching tarpon on the shoreline stuff, so those still bite, even though it's windy as crap, but uh, nighttime, so it doesn't film very well. But I've got a couple I could just throw on the end of this, of course. Um, primary thing I want to go over is um, cast net repair. So this is kind of one of those good things for uh, windy days when downtime and can't get out and fishing, but pretty important. Um, for me especially, I, I really uh, rely on the live baits a lot, and if you watch my videos, the type of fishing I do. So um, I throw the net a lot, and because of that, I get uh, snagged up, um, you get the big fish head stuck in it, I end up tearing the net to free some wrong species or whatever and just general wear and tear so you got to kind of patch holes those because they can get worse and just start spreading more or you start losing more bait which is kind of a hassle um, so I'll just kind of show you my little quick patch repair um, you've got a hole in your net it's a quick easy fix um, just don't overthink it and uh, check it out thanks okay so you can see what I've got here got my cast net um, I go through and just uh, start uh, checking out and looking for any uh, holes in it um, you can see here I've got a decent sized one all kind of meshed up there um, then you can find all a bunch of little small little holes here as well um, I'm going to actually show this one as the repair that I do it's a nice little quarter size and then if, depending on the bait, I mean, you'll be surprised. Basically what happens is you throw the net and then uh, a pinfish or a small grunt or a small snapper, they instantly fall into these little larger holes and then they get basically gilled and you got to spend an hour trying to get them out or even mullet or something or you just start losing bait and you don't even know it. But uh, that's kind of a hassle to have those so you do have to kind of patch those up. So the things you're going to need to do the repair is basically any type of little scissors. I've got these little boomerang tools snips. Super, super little tool to have for just general fishing. Um, I keep these on my work desk because I don't want to take them out and get them uh, corroded out. Uh, salt water kills everything. Um, they work so good, I just don't want to mess them up. I just use the two for a dollar, dollar store scissors when I'm out in the water. They cut fine, but when I'm doing detail work or my lines and leaders at home, uh, these just work out so so great. Um, I think these are like 15 bucks or something like that uh, Maybe even less than that for the regular ones. Don't get the one with the little light on it unless you only fish uh, Fresh water even then I'd be fine. It'd be kind of sketchy but They do make a salt water version, which I think is 25 bucks, which I imagine is all stainless steel and aluminum, but uh, That's a bit much for these clips. So I would just stick with them at home what you're gonna use these for is basically, besides just cutting the line, is that you're gonna use those to trim off all the little loose loose uh, ends on these so that you don't have any uh, frays sticking out. And then the other thing you're going to need is just basically some uh, regular mono line. Um, doesn't really make a huge difference. You just wanna stay similar to the weight of the line that you've got there. Um, I've got a bunch of leaders I keep on my kayak from four pound for like a pinfish all the way up to whatever 60, 80 pound for tarpon or whatever, whatnot. I just keep them on a loop like this. But uh, I think this is close to like an eight to 10 pound, uh, which is this stuff here. So basically all I'm gonna do is just cut up a bunch of manageable sizes because it's gonna be basically one and done. So figure maybe about four or five inches and then just cut a bunch of them up just makes it a little easier to work with than uh, one single strand uh, still attached. Okay, and that's basically all we really need right there. Um, first off, like I said, is, is just basically cleaning off any of the uh, edges or the loose trims on these. So like I might have under here, like this loose one here. So I just wanna cut everything as close as you can to the knot and anything sticking under that's loose and all it does is that it'll prevent uh, 
the lines from sticking to each other. Okay, so you can see that's all pretty much clean, all pretty flush there. And then what you're going to do, this is the pretty simple part, is you're just going to connect uh, corners. Um, so like I'm going to go corner to that corner there. And that's why having a good good little piece there, you don't want to go too small because it's a hassle of time. You're just going to do regular overhand knots, nothing fancy and just tie them together okay and all you're doing is closing that hole I mean I, I imagine you the way they've got those net making tools and so forth but really not looking to do that and once you tie it off just knot it up pretty tight and then again take your good snips and really close to the knot you want it as flush as possible and there you go so I mean that that little corner there is kind of fixed by with that little piece that I put there. Still a hole there, so I'll put one more piece there, and I'll just go edge to edge, corner to corner, basically. Regular overhand knot. I actually use my uh, a headlamp when I do this. It makes it easier to to see with the glare. And tie that. Make it snug so it doesn't come undone. Hold it there. Put it flush. And there you go. Okay, and it's basically patched. It's not all symmetrical, but it's really not going to make a difference. You just want it small enough that bait's not going to be cutting through these holes there. I mean, uh, really, if you want to, you could probably put one more corner to corner there. Uh, but otherwise, mesh size is pretty much fixed. It's strong. It's not going to go anywhere. Okay. And you're all done. Quick and easy. So just something really quick that you can patch up. So I've got tons of holes on this. So you can see here, we got another hole here, another torn stretch there. So I'll just go through and patch all these holes. It's a good uh, couple hour tour depending on how torn up your net is. And that just saves you uh, from the hassles. Because if you leave those holes open, what will happen is if a, a piece of brush gets to those, it creates a weak spot. And then you're going to rip it even more and easier. As well as just losing bait or spending the time of having to try to pull the bait out of theirs. So that's how to fix your cast net. One other thing to know about cast nets is uh, it's good every once in a while to um, hang them. Uh, don't hang them so the weight's dangling, but so that the weights are on the ground so there's no pressure on the nets. Give it a good fresh water hose down, let it dry. Then uh, grab a five gallon bucket, go down to the dollar store, get some uh, fabric softener. Just put a cap or two in there, uh, throw the net in there. Uh, usually I just bundle mine up just like when I store it, I just run itself on itself. Throw in the bucket, cup or two of uh, laundry fabric softener. Doesn't need to be expensive down here or anything. Fill it up with some water and let it just sit in there for a couple hours or overnight. Okay, And all basically what it does is it, it it takes that crinkliness off of your net and lets it basically um, feel a lot more silky smooth um, so it won't bind up and be all crinkly and whatnot um, especially for the cheaper nets like I've got here um, you use like a real nice Tim Wade and the real nice nets with the nice fabric uh, the nice uh, uh, mono on there and then you really don't need to do it that often you just want to keep the, the salt off of them and then the UV rays off of them they'll last forever but these sometimes need a little bit of help, and then um, it'll help them open up, it'll help you load, it'll help you clear, so it's a good thing to do. Uh, the next thing the next thing I want to go over is uh, this piece of gear I just picked up. Actually, I just found this last week when I was doing one of my, uh, I was going to head out to the Gulf, and then the, um, there was a big storm coming through, so I had to kind of just wait it out, so I just floated around the flats by the launch and uh, came out with this, uh, it was just a little bit sticking out, maybe about, probably kind of see where the sun faded on it, but only about that much was sticking out of the water at an angle. I thought it was like a PCV pipe where people were marking like a channel mark or whatnot, 
I didn't really pay attention to, to it, and then I finally floated close enough, went to take a look. I grabbed it, it was loose, and I was lucky enough to get one of these dudes. But, and what this is, I've talked about in one of my lobster videos, is this is a bully net. Okay? It was kind of like my net that I used for catching the uh, blue crabs and the shrimp, but this is a true on lobster uh, bully net. And, I was pretty happy to find that. I wasn't planning on doing any bully netting because I don't want to have to buy a net. I don't want really to do it that often, but now that I have it, I'll probably do one and do a video on it. So that'll work out well. So basically all it is is that you have a standard net, um, standard mesh, like it's a basically almost like a fishing net, bent at a 90 degree angle. So let's say you've got lobsters. Um, you do this at nighttime because uh, lobsters are more active at nighttime. Uh, there's professional series boats where they've got the lights in the water beaming underneath and basically lighting the whole surface. And then you go around the flats, around structures where normally lobsters would live, but then at nighttime they're out walking around. And you kind of usually do this on flats between a foot and maybe four or five foot, whatever you could reach and whatever you could see uh, clearly in. And you basically just cruise around until you see a lobster, and then uh, say this is the lobster is sitting on there, cruise up, you see it. Um, the string itself right here is all that does is it keeps the, the net up. Drop the net over it, okay? Wait for that lobster to start kicking around, because the first thing they do is they kick backwards. Let you have that net uh, loose. It'll basically kick out into the edge there and then over the edge and then once it's over that side then you can basically turn it on its angle so it's basically trapped in the, the pocket here and lift it up. So that's a bully net and I'll be uh, thinking about giving that a try. If these winds ever stop I need to come somewhat of a clear, clear night. Like I said that was another reason why I've got that uh, expensive headlight now. Um, I'll be doing the headlamping. It's not so good, so it needs to be pretty flat, calm, otherwise the glare from ripples will make it hard to see any depth. But it's something to try and we'll check it out. Uh, another thing I've been doing is with the tarpon fishing at nighttime, um, especially when it's windy like this, the water's uh, choppy, um, it's a bit muddy and so forth, then I switch over to topwater. Okay, I go from those DOA shrimps um, to actual top water, a little bit more active. And these have been working out really well. Um, generally, I am a super spook junior guy. Um, and I usually do my two things is one, I get a light color, which is the white uh, with the mullet corner sides. I don't necessarily care about the redheads, but it is what it is. And then I usually go with a dark version. Same thing with all my lures, a light and a dark. Um, I went with these uh, Bombers Badonkadonks. Uh, I shouldn't have. They just didn't have this in the color I like. I usually get this color pattern on the Super Spook Juniors. Uh, but I figured I will give it a try. So I picked this up just to have it. Uh, it's What well, the problem is, it's a too big of a profile. These uh, Spook Juniors are perfect for around here for the, the smaller tarpons, a little bit of the snooks and so forth. During the mullet run, this would be perfect. Um, Probably going out in the blue water, going on top water for the bait schools, this will probably work out better. But if I personally, I would have liked to have the Super Spook Junior in this color mode, in that size. Um, also, what you can see is what I do is the hooks that come on these are those salt water thin, um, I don't know what they're composite there, but they're, they're not very strong and tarpon will bend these. Even these smaller ones that I'm catching, because I'm catching them in current, they're uh, jumping pretty hard fighting fish. That instant initial impact is hit is pretty hard. And I was basically losing a lot of fish because these uh, hooks are bending out. Flexing out, they jump off and they're gone. So um, I do two things. One, I either do it rig it this way, which is, um, I pretty much do this with all my treble hard lures, hard baits I throw, is I'll, I'll at the minimum go to a single treble with a J hook in the back as a chaser. And the primary reason why I want to do it that way is I hate treble hooks. I hate double treble hooks twice as much, especially in a kayak. In a boat, I don't really concern about it. 
And especially if I don't care about the fish, if it's going right in the cooler or I'm taking it home, I really don't care. That's not that big of a deal. I'll cut the line, fill the whole thing until the fish is dead, then remove it. But on a kayak, treble hooks are just sketchy. Don't like them at all. Um, these are kind of small, and when I have just one J hook on the back, it's, it's, it's more manageable to get it, releasing them, taking them out. But with two of these things flopping around, that is just bad news. So I always just either go to a single, or like I do with these, is that I run a double. And all that encompasses is that it, the hooks initially come with uh, one snap swivel, okay? So all I do is I'll get one of my secondary swivels, add that to it, and then attach it with the hook. Uh, I think this is like a 5 aught because it's a little bit bigger. I'm going to probably use this for more blue water stuff, so a little bit bigger fish there. And then uh, these are 3 aughts that I'm using for the smaller uh, Super Spook Juniors. They seem to mesh up. Um, you do want to watch out is that uh, if you start getting too big, you have the risk of them catching on themselves. So you want to be careful that you're not oversizing the uh, split rings and oversizing the hooks. But that's a good balance there. I still keep the action. And my hookup rate <laughs> went from, I think I caught, I was one for one on the stock out of the package. And then after that, the hooks were starting to get bent. And then I was 0 for 7, I think. And then I switched to the J hooks and then I was back to 1 to 1 on hookups and basically landing. So, uh, and lastly for what I've been doing during this windy time frame is that I've been doing my normal uh, rehabbing my uh, uh, reels. Um, I rebuilt one of my uh, TLD 32 speed trolling reels. Uh, the clutch, da clutch dog assembly on it was corroded so it wouldn't engage and it was basically free spooling in both directions and then not working. So I rebuilt that one and then I usually my every two or three weeks I rehab my spinning reels uh, so I have to because of corrosion just kind of getting them gummed up so I do my quick breakdowns on those but I also did is uh, I got lucky and I someone had uh, thrown this thing in the bushes at the uh, the pipes and I found it in the bushes in the mangroves uh, where I parked the motorcycle when I fished the pipes on the uh, NAS for the tarpon at night time um, it was pretty jacked up, so I understood why they threw it away. Uh, the reel was all corroded and locked up, so it wasn't even turning at all. And um, half the guides, these are just cheap, non-ceramic, just metal aluminum guides, uh, were all bent out of shape, The uh, and the tip was missing. So I basically uh, put on a new tip, um, gently put all the guides back in place, and the reel I just had to take apart totally and basically rehabbed it. Um, it looked like this was a combo. This was a Roddy limited edition combo. And uh, I think on Walmart it sells for like 35 bucks or something like that. So real cheap combo. But what really worked out for me is that on some of my past videos I've mentioned that um, one of the rods I had lost at the beginning of the year was my, my pinfish and ballyhoo rod, which is a little six foot ultralight two piece rod. Uh, had a little 1000 surf reel on it. It was my shad pole for uh, back in California, but it fell off and I lost it and I was kind of bummered with that. And so I had to downsize my actual light tackle rigs and use those to make one my dedicated pinfish rod, so that kind of sucked. But finding this and then uh, rehabbing it, now I've gone back to it and it was, it's a two piece. So that's exceptional, so I can break it down and keep it in my hatch. Um, real basically made real, I was surprised about that. It doesn't seem to have any ball bearings on it. So normally where you have the ball bearings, it just has like a little plastic one piece bearing is what it swivels on. Um, seems to work. So I took off the crappy line that they had on. I put some of that 15 pound uh, pink Andes I had and it's somewhat smooth. I mean, I'll probably have to rebuild this after every couple of trips, but it goes smooth. Uh, the action's really light and flimsy and perfect for pinfish and just throwing my little uh, value tiny gold hooks out there. So that was a, a good save there. Um, and then the other one I found was, this is my one of my neighbors that just he just was gonna throw away, just gave it to me. And it was basically missing a, a 
the top six inches had broken off or uh, so what had happened is that the secondary guide was basically right about here so even though when I put a tip on it this guy that I actually moved was here and the tip so it's kind of funky that it was like that so I ended up uh, taking that guide off and Rethreading it and relacquering it and just moving it down so it's halfway between the first and third guide. So it looks a little bit more lively. And again, this is another one that's a real flimsy, lightweight, cheapy little Shimano Stimula. Um, I got to see if I scrounge around my reels. I might have another small little 1,000, 2,000 reel. And this is another one that fits that little pinfish fun little rod uh, set up. So I'm going to set that up. And another video with these two rods just on something of uh, you don't need fancy stuff you just need the core basics and uh, you can catch fish too so I'll probably do a video using these two basic throwaway rods but other than that I think that's all I've been doing um, 25 30 knots hurricane threats just not much you can do about it uh, hopefully get on the water in the next couple days it's supposed to thin out a bit uh, I'm not going to get any offshore days for a while, I don't think, but uh, I, I, I want to get back out there as soon as possible. Um, otherwise, I'll make do with what I can. So, check out, I think I've got a tarpon or two videos that I could uh, patch out. It's at night time. That headlight I have is excellent. It's super bright, but it has a really tight radius on it. So, the cone on the light is just very thin, so it doesn't do very well. And GoPros just suck at nighttime, so it's hard to pick them up. So basically, I have a bunch of videos where I've just landed fish and not so exciting. But I've got them with the top water, so you can check that out. Anyways, I'll talk to you soon. Thanks.